Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and I have been getting massive floods of emails, tweets, and comments on my last couple of videos asking how I get the wallpaper on my screen here to animate. Now you guys may have remembered back in the Vista era, there was something called dream scenes where you could actually play a video in the background and actually have it be like a motion wallpaper and you could have that loop so that it was a seamless experience. But alas, Microsoft removed that feature because it was eating up too much CPU and let's be honest, they did not implement the feature correctly. But now there is a new thing out called Wallpaper Engine that's available on Steam. It's currently a pre-release, so don't expect it to be flawed. And I'm going to show you some of the some of the pitfalls in this video But what this software allows you to do is have full motion wallpaper on your desktop And there are literally thousands and thousands of motion wallpapers You can download and thousands of different configurations you can have in a multi mon setup I really look forward to them ironing out all of the bugs so that it works flawlessly All right, so to download it just open up steam and do a search for wallpaper space engine it's $4, basically $3.99. And it even says that it's a pre-release when you download it because they pretty much want to set expectations pretty low. But you're going to be surprised with how awesome the software is and it's worth every penny. Now, once you have the software downloaded, you open up the user interface and it shows you a layout of all of your monitors. You can see here, I have all four of my displays in the proper orientation. Now you can come up here to layout. You can say, I want a wallpaper per monitor or you wanna stretch it all to a single monitor. So you have lots of layout options. Like for instance, if I want to do uh, a wallpaper per monitor and I click this, now I can click on each one of these and give them a different wallpaper. Now, as you guys can see behind me, I have a clock up on this wallpaper. This wallpaper here is the spinning DNA helix. And then these two up here are raindrops falling over a background out a window. I can change each one of these independently. So now that I have a wallpaper selected over here on the right, I can actually speed up and slow down the animation of the wallpaper. And I can also change the accent, which is basically the color of like the window bars and everything that go along with the theme. Now, depending on which wallpaper you select, you might have other options. Like for instance, on this one, I actually have volume because there's audio associated with it. I can change the alignment. I can even change the horizontal and vertical position. Now, depending on whoever created the wallpaper, you're gonna have different sliders and different options. Now, if you go up and click on the settings cog, you can actually see that you can change it from low settings to high settings. You can even come down here and change the frames per second of the wallpaper. But if you exceed 30 frames per second and go up to 60, it'll say high FPS may slow down your PC. But if you keep it at 30 or under, you're probably not gonna have a problem. Now, personally, my system is a total beast, so it can handle the 60 frames per second setting. But another nice thing about the software is it actually will pause the playback of the animation if you full screen an application or if you full screen a game. So in either one of those situations, the background will freeze and it'll reduce the consumption of CPU on your system. Another really cool thing that I wasn't expecting is the CPU utilization is insanely low. As you can see here, only one core is seeing anything at about two or 3%. Now my system is a beast, so expect a little bit more on your system if it's not a dual processor Xeon like mine, but slowing down that frame rate also will greatly reduce that. But it's a heavy GPU load, which is nice because when you're playing a full screen game and your GPU is in use, you're not looking at the wallpaper. And when you're not playing a game, the GPU isn't in use most of the time, unless you're doing rendering and stuff like that, in which case it still will pause itself if those applications are full screen. So this was very well thought out. Now back to the settings, you can actually go in and change when you want it to run and when you want it to pause per monitor or for all of the monitors. And under your general settings here, you can set the high priority on the process so that it's not chugging and popping around when, uh, when you're loading stuff. Uh, or you can lower that priority if you find that it's slowing your system down. You also have a lot of advanced settings down here where you can select DirectX 11, 9, or OpenGL, depending on what works best with your graphics card. And you can also say if you want the video to load from disk or from memory for the background that's being displayed. Now, some of the wallpapers actually do play back a video in a loop, but there's also wallpapers that do fractals and other cool design that actually use the GPU. And there's some that even display information like CPU utilization, a clock, all that stuff embedded into the background, which I think is rather neat. Here, let's load up a couple of them and take a look here. So if you just bought a Nintendo Switch, Switch you can get the Nintendo Switch wallpaper. Nintendo Switch. Aha! 
Here we have it, guys. You can see our first crash here. Web Wallpaper 32 has ended unexpectedly, and you can see that, they're, that not all the wallpapers are animating anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, but notice it didn't crash the entire application, so I can still go back and select another wallpaper. Ooh, crashed again. Now, one thing I've noticed is when the crashes occur the most is when I'm taking one wallpaper and stretching it across all of the screens. When I do a wallpaper per screen, I find that I usually don't have as many crashes. It also depends on the wallpaper that you're using. I found that the matrix wallpapers are the ones that are most susceptible to crashing. So let's go ahead and set it back to wallpaper per monitor. So I'm gonna put it in the mode where I can have a different wallpaper on each monitor. And then uh, let's go ahead and do like the matrix. And all you do is select choose monitor for each monitor that you want the matrix on. And you just go back and it'll remember these settings when you reboot the computer or restart the program. And then for my top monitor here, let's go ahead and do uh, the matrix, not the rain. So that they're just a little different. So now you can see I have the matrix rain coming down behind me, which is actually a really cool effect. Now it looks like I hit another bug in Wallpaper Engine, and that is over on the side two screens here, I can see a little horizontal and vertical scroll bar, like they didn't quite go into full screen mode like they were supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill Wallpaper Engine and restart it. But again, guys, realize this is pre-release software. All of these bugs are gonna get fixed, and I'll be honest, once you get the wallpaper that you want configured and set, and you're not fussing around and constantly switching things, it does seem pretty stable. Let's go ahead and try a couple of the different wallpapers. Now, this one is called Canvas Circle, and it actually gives you an animation when sound is playing. We also have one here that's like a black hole that moves around. Uh, scrolling down through here, we have COD 13. These are just a couple of my favorites. This one actually has some sound associated with it but you can also turn the sound down if you don't want it. We have the Assassin's Creed wallpaper. So if you're a big fan of Assassin's Creed, it's got all the little gears turning and everything in the background. It also has audio, but you can turn that off if you don't like it. This one is called Fate Zero. It's just another like animating video in the background. Uh, the DNA fragment, which we saw earlier, this one's actually really cool because it's very, very sharp, very crisp. One of my absolute favorites is this magic cloth, and it's just this really cool animating cloth effect. And again, we can go ahead and just make that on every single display. And now you can see in the background, we have this really cool fabric effect kind of moving around. And you can also change the position and the playback rate. So let's go ahead and make it playback really fast. Now you can also have a different animated wallpaper on each one of the screens. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that right now. All right, so now I've selected a different wallpaper for each screen behind me. You can see they are all running seamless. They are all completely separate and they are all completely configurable independently. You gotta admit guys, this just looks cool. It definitely makes you feel like you're in the matrix, guys. <laughs> it's, this is just so freaking cool, guys. You, got, you just have to try it yourself. It's definitely worth the four bucks. Now to interact with the program, there's just a little tray icon. You just double click it and it pops up and you can select your monitor, what you wanna install. And another thing is it comes with a bunch of wallpapers pre-installed or you can click on workshop up here in the corner and it actually opens up a Steam store that has over 900 pages of backgrounds that users have created. But one more cool thing that makes this unique is you can also create your own wallpapers for Wallpaper Engine and you can sell them in the Steam store. So you can actually sell your own wallpapers or you can just make your wallpapers available for, for free. You can see down here, if we open up the Steam store, we have Wallpaper Engine. You can see there's already some top sellers in here. People selling wallpapers for like $1.99, 99 cents. Um, and you can also search by you know 3D interactive wallpapers. Uh, there's not a lot in the store right now, but I'm gonna guess that that's gonna change dramatically as more people adopt this thing. But the amount of free wallpapers is fantastic. You can even sort the wallpapers by top rated, most recent, most popular, most popular for the week, month, year, or today, friends, favorites on Steam. This thing is very, very integrated into Steam, which I, this thing is very integrated into Steam, which I quite like. And you can even subscribe and unsubscribe to people that create wallpapers. And it's just, there, there are a lot of features in here, guys. There is a lot of stuff. I'm still discovering new things myself. Also, if you want to create your own wallpaper, you just click here and it'll open up the wallpaper editor and you can create a new scene. You can do video wallpapers. You can even do wallpapers from web. You can do an application wallpaper where you can do stuff like integrate the stats of the system and things like that. And there's full tutorials showing you how to do all of this stuff to generate your own wallpapers that you can publish in the library for free and then at a later date even sell in the store. Well guys, I hope that that answers your question as to how I got animated wallpaper on all of the big screens here in the background of my latest videos. And I hope that you guys give it a try. 
yourself, but just be aware that it is a pre-release software right now and it is susceptible to cr some crashing, especially for the application wallpapers. If you're using the wallpapers that are just a video or based on some kind of imagery, you're not gonna have a problem. But if you're doing stuff like the matrix where there's a lot of complex code involved in dynamically generating the wallpaper, you are going to experience some crashes, but hopefully, they get that all worked out in the future. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the video or what you think about Wallpaper Engine. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and always feel free to come over to Twitter and tweet me. I am at Barnacles and see behind the scenes images and other cool stuff over on Instagram, also at Barnacles. You can pretty much find me at Barnacles anywhere on the entire interwebs. All right, guys, take it easy. And until next time. The software is fantastic. I really look forward to them ironing. I really look forward to. I really look forward to them ironing. I really look forward to them iron ironing. I really look forward. To I really look forward to them ironing. I can't say ironing. I can't say ironing.